Okay, so two types of fuel system: gravity feed and the pressure feed. As the name suggests, gravity feed is the one in which the gravity is going to create a pressure for a fuel. But that does not mean only gravity will create. We can also have a pump over there. And pressure feed is the one in which we have a pressure pump installed so that the fuel can be supplied under a high pressure. In a gravity feed, the system will be very simple, like this. Suppose there would be a fuel tank. This will be a fuel tank, and then the fuel tank will supply the fuel like this. If there are more than one fuel tank, let us say left fuel tank and right fuel tank, both the fuel tank will be interconnected over here like this using the selector valve. Okay, this is selector valve, and then the selector valve will be connected down to the uh, pump if required. Otherwise, it, if not, it is not required. Okay, and then the pump will supply the fuel to the engine carburetor okay this happens only in case of the small aircraft or we can say only in case of the piston engine aircraft so we are not bothered about this today what we are going to study is the pressure feed fuel system okay we are not going to concentrate more on this gravity field we are going to concentrate on a pressure fuel uh, uh, pressure system okay so in a fuel system the most important part of any fuel system is going to be the reservoir right the thing that is going to store the fuel right so this is the fuel tank fuel tank will have all the aspects as we have uh, already know that there should be a filler port over here from where we can fill the fuel okay the quantity indicator should be there okay so mainly what is the fuel, purpose of the fuel tank in a fuel system to store the fuel whatever amount of the fuel it is storing that should be indicated in the cockpit as the amount of fuel stored in the aircraft Okay. After the fuel tank, the fuel has to be supplied to the engine. Now the engines can be below the wings, or it can be on the empennage. As in case of the MD11, you have seen that engines are on the tail, right? So for that reason, the pressure has to be supplied. Even in the gravity field, because the aircraft is flying at a higher altitude, and gravity field is not that reliable because when the uh, aircraft is changing the attitude that means aerodynamic shift kar raha beta so fuel supply will band ho jayega right so for that reason we require a pump to be installed okay so after the fuel tank we have a main fuel pump okay after this we get a main fuel uh, main fuel pump this is the main fuel pump now don't go with the diagram fuel tank will be very very big fuel pump will be very very small okay this one is called as the main fuel pump you will also have an auxiliary fuel pump which is a standby for this it will be adjacent to this if this fails the fuel can supply to the auxiliary fuel pump okay main fuel pump is divided into two stages the first stage is called as a boost stage What is the name of the first stage? Boost, boost stage. Boost stage means what? What will happen is the fuel which is coming over here will obviously will be not under the high pressure, right? It will not have that much amount of force. It will come uh, over here. The boost stage, which is a basically a centrifugal pump, what it will do is it will rotate at a very high speed and pressurize this fuel. Okay. After the boost stage, we have uh, the fuel will be supplied. into the gear pump or you can say gear element okay gear pump basically dgc is this is boost element this is gear element but basically ye kya hota beta boost stage and the gear pump the boost stage is increasing the pressure of the fuel and then the high pressure fuel is supplied to the gear pump okay obviously if something is rotating it can create the contamination right so we require a filter over here okay so this is the filter which ensure that no contamination is going into the gear pump gear pump is a positive displacement type pump right so what will happen is if the pressure is increased on this side and the fuel cannot go forward what will happen is the pump will keep giving the amount of the fuel in excess so what will happen is there would be extra amount of the fuel available over here which is not been consumed so what happens is this pipe can burst because of the high pressure i don't want the pipe to burst so what we have to do is we have to install a pressure relief valve over here okay 
this is what is called as a pressure release valve p r v pressure release valve what is the purpose of the pressure release valve if there is an extra pressure on the downline or there is excess pressure on the downline it will relieve the pressure jo bhi high pressure aayega beta on the downside it will be thrown out from here like this so fuel will go over here that's why this pipe will be safe guarded okay so fuel tank fuel is supplied to the uh, boost stage from the boost stage the fuel is further uh, uh, fuel is pressurized it is a centrifugal type of the pump from this the fuel will go into the filter where the contaminants are removed from there the fuel is supplied into the gear box gear pump okay this two are both connected to the accessory gear box so if it is connected to the accessory gear box that means what that whenever the uh, 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 gear box is rotating gear box is rotated by the starter also right so it will also rotate so that is how the pressure is created okay understood pressure relief valve prv here what happens is this is a uh, internal section of the diagram basic diagram this is the inlet from which the fuel will enter this is the outlet from which the fuel will go out So when the fuel is coming over here, it will come over here and hit this ball. Okay. If the uh, and here there is a spring. Okay. Here there is a regulator where which I can tighten or reduce the pressure over here. The tension on the uh, screw can be changed. So if you are changing the this that is turning this, the pressure can be controlled over here. Okay. That will be done uh, at the time of installing this. So suppose the fuel is coming over here and if it has uh, enough pressure so that the spring tension can be overcome by the fuel understood that let us say this was a spring spring had some pressure if you can overcome that pressure what will happen is it will unfit the ball wall ball valve ko kya karega beta it will push over here and what will happen is the pressure from here, fuel from here will go over here that is how pressure relief valve works if the pressure is at a proper level that is there is no excess pressure what will happen is the fuel will still come over here it will try to push the ball but the uh, sorry fuel will come over here it will try to push the ball but the spring will take care it will not allow the ball to be pushed over here that is how the pressure is maintained over here whenever the pressure reaches above that value open excess fuel is removed that is how the system works from here the excess fuel has to be removed and put back into the gear stage okay so so what is happening here is main function of the pump is to increase the pressure now i have got a high pressure fuel which is coming out now this is the downline this is called as an upline suppose a uh, rotating part are inside the gear pump so gear pump is rotating two gears are getting meshed with each other that is creating a wear and tear of the gear system so whenever there is a wear and tear what will happen is whenever there is a wear and tear it will uh, contaminate the fuel so you require a fuel filter after this okay there should be a fuel filter okay this is a fuel filter this fuel filter will ensure that no contamination goes in the downline now obviously if it is a filter filter may get clogged because of the contaminant blocking the pores so you require a small bypass valve uh, here okay if the fuel gets contaminated you require something to bypass right so this is called as a bypass valve bypass valve please understand the function of the bypass valve what it will do is if the filter uh, fuel which is coming over here has to be removed of all the contamination okay let us understand it with the picture let us say this is the fuel filter okay the filtering element is here let us say the fuel comes over here and this is my filtering element filtering casing okay what happens is fuel comes over here and here we have got a rigid support okay in this rigid support there is a small opening over here and in that small opening same as our pressure relief valve there is a small ball okay 
and here there is a cut like this. This is the outlet. This is the inlet. Okay. What happens is the fuel will come from here. Okay. It will be present on the all the sides of the filter. This is the filter, filtering element. Okay. So fuel will be collected on all the side of filtering element, and filtered fuel will enter inside the filtering element. If I draw it properly, it will do something like this. Like there is a small mesh-like structure over here, which you have seen in all the filters like this. Okay. So what it will do is it will remove the contaminants. All contaminants will get blocked over here, all the wear and tear, and your fuel will enter here. This fuel is a pure fuel. Okay. From here, we have got a small opening over here through which the fuel will go out. From here, the fuel goes out. And that's how we get get the fuel. Okay, this is the inlet of the filter. This is the outlet of the filter. Okay, so the fuel comes from here, comes into the casing. This is casing, outer casing. Filter goes out over here. Please remember, whatever filtering is done should be done from outside to inside. This is the filtering element, right? This is the outer area. This is the inner area. Filtering is done from outside to inside. This is a DGCA question. They ask why the filtering should be done from outside to inside. So, so that we can increase the surface area. See, if I filter it from inside to outside, that is suppose I can keep this as an inlet, this as outlet, it will work properly, right? There is no problem in working because this is the inlet. Fuel will come, filter out from here, and go out. It can work properly. But what happens is you get only this much surface area, that is inner part, whereas the outer part is the bigger surface area, right? So I can hold more contaminant over here, right? Understood. So what happens is the fuel comes over here. It, it goes into the casing. It gets filtered into the filter, and from here the filter fuel will go out. In case the contaminants are so much that they clog the filter, that means what will happen is the pressure uh, fuel will be available under pressure over here, but now the fuel cannot go out from here because it's uh, it has got clogged. Okay, contamination has closed all the ports, and the fuel cannot enter over here. But I cannot have the engine with uh, running without the fuel, right? So what is our mentality that we should supply the fuel, irrespective of whether it is contaminated or not contaminated? We must try to uh, try to pass the fuel which is a good, which is a filtered fuel, because that will prevent the other component from getting damaged. But that does not mean that I should not supply the fuel to prevent the damage to the component, right? फिल्टर अगर काम नहीं करेगा तो इसका मतलब नहीं है कि इंजन बंद कर दो बिकॉज देन द पैसेंजर लाइफ इन सेफ्टी कम्स इनटू द कंसीडरेशन सो दैट्स व्हाई देयर इज अ बाईपास वाल्व व्हाट इट डज इज इफ द फिल्टर गेट्स क्लॉक्ड इट विल जस्ट ओपन एंड अलाउ द फ्यूल टू गो ओवर सो व्हाट हैपेंस हियर सेम एज योर प्रेशर रिलीफ वाल्व फोर्स विल कम प्रेशर विल कम ओवर हियर इफ इट इज मोर देन द प्रेशर इट कैन विस्टैंड सो इट विल गो अप इट वर्क्स ऑन द डिफरेंशियल प्रेशर फ्यूल प्रेशर विल बी अवेलेबल ऑन दिस साइड आल्सो दिस साइड आल्सो इफ देयर इज अ डिफरेंस इन द प्रेशर दिस ओपन्स and ame will get an indication that whenever the filter is open bypass valve is open by a pop up indication this is called as a pop up indication this pop up indication comes up whenever the uh, bypass valve is open ye upar aa jayega beta as an ame you have to see this and then you have to do the corrective action in case of this there is a small drain also available over here i hope that completes the filter so let's go ahead after the fuel uh, fuel filter we have got the most important component of this fuel system that is called as the fcu fuel control unit fuel control unit okay in short it is Term that FCU. All the examination will be term as FCU only. Okay, this FCU it gets the signal from the cockpit by using what throttle lever. Okay, throttle lever when you move, it will also move, right? So it gets the indication from the cockpit. Okay, apart from it, it is also getting the indication of different pressures. Which I am not showing the picture. Just understand, it gets uh, all the required things. So main signal that it should get is a throttle lever signal. 
that means what the pilot is demanding if the pilot is moving the throttle lever into the idle position the fuel supply should be in the form of an idle supply if the pilot moves it to the takeoff the fuel should be more so that the more power can be created okay fcu also controls your servo actuator from here fuel will enter a device called as servo actuator servo actuator means what it is working on the fuel pressure and it is actually controlling two parts first one is variable theta wing and bleed valve तो बेटा ये क्या क्या कंट्रोल करता है बेटा वेरिएबल स्टेटर वेल एंड ब्लीड वैल्व ब्लीड वैल्व को कंट्रोल करना मतलब ब्लीड एक्चुएटर को कंट्रोल करना ओके सर्वो एक्चुएटर फॉर कंट्रोलिंग बोथ ऑफ देम ऑन द एयरक्राफ्ट यू कैन सी दिस देन यू विल अंडरस्टैंड इट प्रॉपर्ली सो व्हाट इज हैपनिंग द फ्यूल व्हिच इज कमिंग ओवर हियर इट्स गोइंग टू द एक्चुएटर एक्चुएटर इज कंट्रोलिंग व्हाट शुड बी द पोजीशन ऑफ द वेरिएबल स्टेटर वेल एज़ वेल एज़ व्हाट शुड बी द पोजीशन ऑफ द ब्लीड वैल्व एंड एफसीयू इज विद द अलोंग विद द थ्रोटल लीवर सिग्नल इट इज डिसाइडिंग ki what pressure should be created understood okay the next part over here after the fcu we have got another device called as overspeed governor overspeed governor osg okay what is the function of overspeed governor or the osg it will see the fuel which is coming over here is enough to sustain a particular type of rpm if that rpm say zyada ho raha beta fuel is more than they require what will happen is it will remove the excess fuel and send it back into what inlet of this understood if there is an excess of the fuel available it will remove this excess of the fuel and throw it back into what inlet of the fuel pump so there is no space to draw it i am drawing it over here this side please try to understand okay so ye kya karega beta yahan se extra fuel aa gaya utha ke isme kya kar liya beta main fuel pump ke inlet mein enter karwa diya usko okay that is the function of the overspeed governor how it is acting if there is an excess pressure only and only then it will allow the fuel to return back to what pump clear beta okay after this please remember this is a dgc question after this there is no change in the amount of the fuel that is supplied to the engine see when i say a fuel control unit no in the fuel control unit also if there is excess amount of the fuel coming it can send it back okay so let us draw it somewhere here If there is excess amount of the fuel coming, you can send this fuel back. Just for understanding purpose, I'm telling you, extra amount of fuel if it comes into the FCU fuel control unit, it will send the fuel back into the inlet of the pump. Understood? So here we are controlling the fuel. If at all, main function of the FCU is to control the overspeed also. But if at all, if you are supplying more fuel, overspeed governor will take into consideration. no excess amount of fuel will be supplied into the engine okay after the overspeed governor fuel flow transmitter comes into picture okay this device is called as a fuel flow meter or you can say transmitter transmitter because it is an electrical device in which what will happen is the fuel which is coming over here will rotate the rotor rotor is inside a magnetic field so when you rotate any uh, armature in a magnetic field it creates the electricity that electricity supply is given into the cockpit so that pilot knows how much amount of the fuel is being utilized after this overspeed governor you do not remove any excess amount of fuel or you do not add fuel also okay a fuel add bhi nahi karte ho nikalte bhi nahi ho that is what you have to understand ओके एंड फ्यूल फ्लो ट्रांसमीटर सीधा मेजर करेगा कि कितना अमाउंट ऑफ फ्यूल आप ट्रांसमिट कर रहे हैं ओके आफ्टर द फ्यूल फ्लो ट्रांसमीटर द फ्यूल कैन एंटर अ डिवाइस कॉल्ड एज एफसीओसी 
okay this is called as the fcoc this is fuel pooled oil cooler as the name suggests fuel se oil ko thanda karna okay fuel cooled oil cooler or you can say it is a fuel heater fuel ko heat bhi karta hai na so generally what happens is the fuel will come over here and pass into the tubes like this fuel is coming into this and it is passing into the tube i'm just drawing a rough diagram beta it is not a perfect diagram so from here i have just shown you three but there are so many of them so fuel is going from here and what happens is oil will enter from the second part here and oil exit from here it can be from any side kahi se bhi aaye kahi se bhi aaye doesn't matter beta oil so oil comes in oil goes out so what will happen is the cold oil uh, sorry uh, hot oil will come over here fuel will cool it understood and this is the fuel flow meter after this comes the most important equipment of your thing called as the p and d valve okay we call it as a p and d valve this is actually a pressurizing and drain valve okay so let us draw this this is p and d valve kya bolenge beta pressurizing and drain valve here we have got a small drain what drain will do it will remove any fuel which is excess available over here okay i'll come to the function of p and d valve in a bit so p and d valve will be located after the p and d valve high pressure fuel will come up over here okay and this high pressure fuel will enter a fuel manifold fuel manifold is nothing but a pipeline in which the fuel can pass so this is fuel manifold we keep a pressure sensor over here pressure sensor this pressure sensor will measure the amount of pressure which is going into the fuel manifold or we can say manifold pressure also okay so first understand there are two part in p and d valve p part is called as pressurizing okay so what it will do is it will see the fuel which is coming under pressure over here it will ensure that the fuel is available in the sufficient pressure so that when it enters the fuel nozzle this is called a fuel nozzle okay fuel nozzle so that when it enters the fuel nozzle it will be in the atomized state if you don't supply it under that pressure what will happen is fuel will not be in the atomized state less pressure the fuel will come in the form of the droplet high pressure very high pressure what will happen is the fuel will come in the form of a mist i don't want either of them so what i should have is i should have a fuel nozzle which will give me properly fuel when you are beta is a fuel nozzle hai, it should give me atomized fuel inside the combustion chamber so now what what we are seeing over here is the combustion chamber okay that this is the fuel nozzle and this is inside combustion chamber combustion chamber so what is actually happening is through this entire process when the fuel comes into the p and d valve p and d valve has got two part pressurizing part and a drain part the pressurizing part it will pressurize the fuel and supply it under the high pressure into the fuel manifold fuel manifold can be of a simplex type or a duplex type we'll do that in detail in the later on classes but just understand that the high pressure fuel comes into the fuel manifold from this fuel manifold the fuel will enter into the fuel nozzle the purpose of the pressurizing wall is to ensure that the fuel is supplied under sufficient pressure so that when it comes out of the nozzle it is in a proper atomized form if too much pressure is there it will become a mist which cannot be burned if less pressure is there it will be in a droplet again which is not useful for us okay and in all this case fuel manifold is also connected to the drain okay so just understand what actually happens so pressurizing and drain valve ka jo drain part hai na what it does 
that suppose you have started the engine okay engine is running fine everything is done you go up you come back you land the aircraft and pilot shuts down the engine so when the pilot shuts down the engine fcu se fuel aana band ho jayega right so the fuel will not be available in this part okay but what about the pnd valve pnd valve was the function to ensure that the excess uh, that is exact pressure is available in the manifold right so if i close this it will not allow the fuel to go back into this we cannot allow that in fact so what will happen the fuel will remain in the manifold suppose i don't have this drain valve what will happen is in the next start when the pilot is starting the engine this fuel which is already available in the excess will enter the combustion chamber leading to the hot start so i need to remove this excess fuel so we have got a drain initially when the pnd valve was introduced it was called as a pressure and uh, what was that dump valve okay pehle kya hota tha beta pressurizing and dump valve use karte the dump valve was what beta whatever excess amount of the fuel is available after the engine shut down in the combustion chamber as well as the fuel manual was dumped overboard matlab seedha ground ke upar fek dete the but as we know in a previous class also we have understood that the fuel is very harmful if it falls onto the surface uh, uh, it can uh, damage the surface so wo prevent karna hai right so that's why what we do is we drain it into a drain pump a drain tank and after a uh, three or four flights we empty this drain tank pumps okay that is how your fuel system actually works this is a very basic understanding of the fuel system so what is it first you require a fuel tank in the fuel tank the fuel will come it will go into the main fuel pump as i told you there is also an auxiliary fuel pump here okay so which i have not shown in the picture auxiliary pump function is if the main fuel pump is not working properly auxiliary fuel pump will pressurize the fuel and supply it in the forward line okay main fuel pump is divided into two stages first stage is called as a boost stage second stage is called as a gear stage or gear element okay boost stage is the centrifugal pump fuel will come inside the boost pump it will rotate to create a high pressure this high pressure fuel passes through the filter and then it goes into the gear pump okay so gear pump mein jayega beta yahan pe aur pressurize ho jayega gear pump is a positive displacement pump as we have installed a pressure relief valve if there is an excess pressure that will be overboard vent outlet of the main fuel pump is passed into the filter to remove any contaminant that may enter into the system okay and from here the fuel filter also has got a bypass valve so that in case the fuel filter fails or if something happens some damage is happening to the fuel pump filter excess pressure on this side will open the bypass valve allow the fuel to go into the fuel control unit this is the heart of the fuel system main part of the fuel system it is connected to the throttle lever okay but only in case of hydro mechanical system hum log bolte ki throttle lever but it is also connected to the pressure sensor what is outside air pressure what is outside air temperature what is the fuel temperature everything should be given to fuel control unit so that fuel control unit can decide taking this parameter into consideration how much amount of the fuel i should send forward okay then i have got an overspeed governor overspeed governor what it does it it is always counting what is the rpm of the engine if the rpm of the engine is exceeding a limit it should be stopped so what overspeed governor does it if the rpm is exceeding too high then the desired value it will remove this excess fuel and throw it back into the pump okay fuel control unit can also do it whatever is the excess amount of the fuel it can throw it over into the tank again from here overspeed governor the fuel enters the fuel float meter or you can say fuel float transmitter actually the transmitter will measure the amount of the fuel and it will supply the signal into the cockpit where we can see what is the amount of the pressure in the fuel high pressure now it comes into the fcoc where the fuel will since fuel is cold here the fuel will cool the hot oil which is coming from the lubrication system lubrication system hone ke baad jo oil hot ho kar aata hai usko cool karega beta from here the oil will go into the oil system fuel will go forward into the fuel system from here the fuel enters the pnd valve DGCA question. P. What is the purpose of P? Pressurizing valve. What is the function of the D? Drain. Option is given. Dump also. Do not mark dump. Dump is being removed now. So pressurizing valve it ensures that the fuel is available in the sufficient pressure so that when you are supplying the fuel, you get a proper automized fuel. Too high pressure, it will create a mist. Too low pressure, it will create a droplet from the fuel. And to measure the what is uh, fuel pressure inside a manifold we have got a pressure sensor this will again give a indication in the cockpit whatever is the excess amount of the fuel after the engine has been shut down has to be removed so we have got a drain which will 
remove the excess amount of fuel available in the fuel manifold after the engine has shut down, preventing the hot start in the next engine. That finishes this job. Okay. If there is any doubt, let me 